We're trying to break down and understand exactly what this budget signals about the future direction of the British economy. Um, is, is a significant rise in corporation tax, I appreciate it's not now, I appreciate it's two years down the road, compatible with this idea of a more competitive globally Brexit Britain? Well, I think one of the reasons why the chance has gone for corporation tax is here in the UK, it's been extremely competitive. So in 2010, it was 28%. It's now fallen to 19%. And even hiking it up to 25% still means it's amongst the most competitive in the G7. Uh, and I think in the US, uh, President Biden during the campaign suggested that rates there might go up from 21 to 28. So I think overall, no chancellor likes to put up any taxes. Uh, certainly at the moment, not taxes on business. But I think in the round, this is seen as one of these which was uh, more doable, uh, given our competitive advantage at the moment. Um, one of the things that, that is going to be critically important going forward is the level of interest that the UK government is going to end up paying. We've seen gilt yields rising sharply today. We're seeing yields around the world rising sharply today. Do you think that the UK, the Chancellor, can deliver on what he laid out today without the Bank of England effectively keeping yields low? I think it's, it's looking promising at the moment if you look at the projections, but you're right to highlight the risk around interest rates rising and the point that the Chancellor made in his uh, budget statement uh, a little while ago was that for every 1% increase in interest rates, that will put a hole in the public finances of 25 billion. And to contextualize that, that will be equivalent to all the money raised from that uh, tax uh, hike on corporations, plus all the money uh, on the next uh, largest tax uh, uh, take that he announced, which was a freezing of the uh, thresholds for income tax. So there's a lot riding on this, and he will be very wary of making sure the markets are reassured that the UK is going to get on top of the deficit and the debt uh, in a timely manner. I was listening to the budget, Mel, and one of the things that I almost had to sort of go back and rewind on was what he was saying about the Bank of England's mandate. The 2% target stays in place, but there's now this additional requirement that the Bank of England use policy to assist the UK's march towards net zero. While we're talking about the Bank of England, do you think that monetary policy is the right way to, to deal with climate change in this country? Do you think monetary policy broadly is the right area? Do you think the Bank of England is the right tool? Well, I think it's, it's one of a number of tools, and clearly uh, he's already made lots of um, comments about uh, investment in, in green technology. There's a national uh, investment bank, uh, which will also be uh, bringing together the private sector and public sector funding, public sector guarantees, etc., to uh, drive forward uh, uh, net zero uh, into the future. Um, as to the bank, that's something where I, I really, having just uh, heard his comments but not seen the detail yet, would really need to, to dig into to be able to uh, comment more in a more detailed fashion on that. Uh, on the, good morning. This is Alex uh, in New York. Um, the other thing that came out of that, we stayed with the green market for a moment, is that you're going to issue some green gilts twice in 2021. Um, how do you think that the UK is going to be able to build out a green bond curve in the same way that Germany is trying to do? Well, I, I think this is something that the, the Bank of England has looked at uh, very closely for quite some time now. So uh, I think they've uh, thought this one through. I think there is certainly uh, clearly a market uh, for this, as there is in sort of the gr greening of investment uh, more generally, which is something that uh, the Bank and Treasury uh, are looking at very closely. Um, I'm not at this stage, as we speak, aware of what kind of scale uh, is in the small print of the announcement that was made uh, today, but I think it dovetails to me uh, in with the push that the UK government is going to have around making sure that the UK government and the City of London and our financial markets are seen as being world leaders uh, in green finance. Talking of the City of London, um, we have had the Hill report, Lord Hill's report out. Uh, we're now going to see uh, the authorities debating it and, and trying to figure out which bits of it work and which bits don't. Nevertheless, I, I looked at it today and I, and I was trying to sort of figure out whether or not the UK is being particularly innovative. I, the SPAC sort of story has taken off in New York. It's now starting to take off in Amsterdam. 
we're going to try and hitch our, our wagon to that uh, story as well. Uh, we've got a visa story that is going to open up and hopefully attract tech talent into the UK. But again, this feels like something that others are already doing. Mel Stryke, do you feel that, that the government is being innovative enough? Do you think it's being creative enough in the way that it tries to reposition both the economy and the city of London uh, in this post-Brexit phase? Well, in terms of the city, obviously, the, the big news for the city uh, in recent times has been Brexit uh, and the uh, looming lack of equivalence that might uh, occur as a consequence of that. And we await developments that may or may not happen uh, later this month in terms of the memorandum of understanding between ourselves and uh, the EU. We've seen some flight of share trading to Amsterdam and there is, I think, uh, will be uh, increasing uh, pressure on derivatives trades, uh, some, some of which would... 25%, I think, of the market could potentially move uh, to, to the EU. And therefore, uh, there is no doubt that the government gets the fact that it's got to look elsewhere substantially uh, for future growth. And if you think about the FTSE 100, the value of that entire market is less, I believe, than the market capitalization of Apple. So uh, what we've got to get into are these higher tech uh, growth opportunities. And that's why the Hill Review, I think, is so important. And I think the government and the Chancellor are extremely serious about pushing that agenda very hard. I mean, it does seem like it. Um, and there is a lot of money involved in it. Uh, Goldman Sachs had a report out that said that just this year, there's been 175 SPACs that have raised $56 billion in IPO capital. It's a lot of money year to date. How much money would you have to siphon off from the U.S. to call it a success for the U.K.? Uh, I can't give you a, a figure on that, um, other than to say that, as I think you were uh, indicating earlier in, uh, in, in your report here, uh, there is a bit of a way to go. And I think there is a general feeling that the UK has slipped behind uh, other marketplaces uh, in this area. Uh, and as I say, I, I think it's, it's right up there at the top of the government's agenda uh, to make the UK a far more attractive place for these kind of businesses.